Well, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying our trip through the Minor Prophets in 2023. So rewarding. I find the Old Testament to be uh, just uh, great, full of illustrations of God's grace, his mercy, his justice. Uh, also important background to what we see later in the New Testament and just gives us a depth of understanding and a richness that uh, just really informs our faith. So I hope you're experiencing all these things with me as I go through this. Certainly the book of Jonah for me has been a time of reflection. I've gone myself through times where I've been reluctant uh, to follow God's will and lose sight of the fact that uh, faithfulness is what I'm called to, not necessarily performance. Maybe you're in the same boat sometimes. And that was a pun, same boat, Jonah, you get it. Well, we're in chapter three today. Uh, in my uh, Bible here, it's labeled Jonah's Preaching. I got a Ryrie Study Bible. NASB labels this chapter, Nineveh Repents. I've kind of written over the top of it, take two for Jonah. This is his second act. And uh, we see in the first couple of verses here, his second call. And then thir uh, verses three and four, we see Jonah's conformity to the will of God. Verses five through nine, the consequences of his obedience. And then verse 10, finally, is the compassion of God. Just want you to remember, too, that what, what we're really seeing here is God's grace, God's compassion, God's mercy, um, both uh, Gentiles who um, are opposed to him, as well as his own servants who are sometimes temporarily opposed to him as well. So we see just a great demonstration of the grace, mercy, compassion of God. So verse 1, 1 and 2 here. Word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. I had an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine several years ago. He said that was his life verse. He had fallen away, turned away from the Lord for a particular period of time, had been resistant to God's will in his life, and then uh, God got a hold of him like he got a hold of Jonah and turned him back again. Perhaps you're in that same boat and learning from Jonah here that uh, there's always the possibility of returning to the Lord. You know, it's interesting when you think about this, uh, the prophet Hosea uh, was also active during this period of time. So certainly God could have used Hosea instead of Jonah. Uh, he could have raised up other prophets in Israel easily, right? It's God's will. Uh, but he didn't. Uh, he stuck with Jonah. His intention was to not only use Jonah, but to mature Jonah. And the way, brothers and sisters, that we become mature is by doing things that God wants us to do and maybe we don't. Uh, that builds self-control, that builds perseverance, that builds um, rest in the sovereignty of God. Uh, it matures us. That's what we see happening here, that God is not going to abandon Jonah. He is going to grow Jonah up. And how many experiences we have in our life is God growing us up. Verses 3 and 4 then of chapter 3 here is uh, uh, Jonah conforming to the will of God. Notice the contrast in verse 3 uh, where it says, um, uh, So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Contrast that earlier in chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, Jonah arose and fled, or Jonah arose, and here it is, Jonah arose and goes. So what a change here, change in Jonah. Verse 4, we see Jonah's prophetic ministry uh, go through the city one day's walk, and he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown. So Nineveh was used by God uh, eventually to carry the nation of Israel into exile. Uh, this is the capital of Assyria, and God's grace is extending even to this nation, even to this country. And that grace is fully demonstrated by the fact that Jonah is sent there. And brothers and sisters in the church age, we have a commission, uh, it's called the Great Commission from our Lord, 
to go and make disciples of all nations. And when he says all nations, he means all nations. So there is no nation that is off limits to us, uh, that we should not be reluctant to go to any nation, no matter how opposed they seem to be to the gospel or to us. Uh, let's learn that from the book of Jonah, that even the hated Assyrians uh, were extended God's grace through the person of Jonah. Uh, so even today, uh, God's grace is extended to the world through the people of the church. Notice also, uh, first of all, that the people of Nineveh responded first. Seems to be a clear pattern here that the first is the people, then the king in verse 6. The king then responded to what was going on. Responding, we can say this is an evangelistic effort uh, that is reaching the highest levels of rulership in Nineveh and in Assyria. Now, one of the things to note here, um, some historical background, is that the Assyrians were notably brutal to their enemies. Uh, terrorizing their enemies. They were notorious for not just killing their enemies, but dismembering them and desecrating their bodies. Um, this would be uh, the height of disrespect for an enemy and would be um, essentially that they are dismembering them, thinking that their gods could never help them again. So that's what's going on here. Um, and so for this king to repent, perhaps uh, a king by the name of Eddad, near, near Ari, uh, historically, for him to repent from this is uh, incredible. It's just incredible. And in fact, secular historians have noted that there were a series of religious reforms made th during this king's reign which may be what we're seeing here. Look at verse 9. This could be troublesome to some people. It says, God may, t who knows? This is Jonah speaking, uh, inviting repentance here. He's saying, who knows? God may turn and relent and withdraw his burning anger so that he will not perish. So people look at that and say, well, uh, I thought God doesn't change his mind. I thought God doesn't make mistakes and change his mind. Well, he doesn't. He's looking for a response from people, and he'll uh, accommodate the response, not that the response uh, catches him by surprise. Jeremiah actually articulates this very well. Jeremiah says, at one moment I might speak concerning a nation, this is God, or concerning a kingdom to uproot it, to pull it down or destroy it. If that nation against which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent according to the calamity I plan to bring on it. Doesn't say anything there at all about whether or not God knew they were going to relent. Uh, I think he does. He's sovereign. He's, he uh, knows all things. Uh, what it's saying here is if that nation turns, that God will withhold his judgment. Nineveh turned. God withheld his judgment for about 200 years, uh, and then, uh, which is what the book of Nahum is about, uh, God brought judgment against that nation because they turned from him. Verse 10, let's close this out. When God saw their deeds, that they turned from their wicked way, then God relented concerning the calamity which he had declared he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is God's sovereignty and compassion. This is what God is doing. He is being compassionate because they are repenting from their idolatry. Uh, just as God did not destroy Jonah in his functional idolatry, in his abandonment of God's will, so God extends his grace and mercy to the nation of Assyria and Nineveh. Now, I know, by way of application, that there are forms of Calvinism that deny that one's response to God's chastening call is relevant at all. In fact, they would say, some forms of Calvinism would say that uh, no matter what they do, they're going to be condemned. 
Others would deny a person's freedom in responding to God. What we see in this chapter is how sovereignty and responsibility collide and produce repentance, which leads to salvation. So too in our lives, the only thing that keeps a servant of God from being effective and faithful is refusal to repent from our sins. If this is you today, again, I urge you to consider Jonah's example. Turn back to God. Return to him a second time, perhaps a third time, perhaps a fourth time. Go back to that God of second and third and fourth chances. He knows you. He knows me. He knows our insides and he knows our outsides. He knows the sincerity of our hearts and our minds. And brothers and sisters, he will forgive Uh, 70 times 7. He will forgive over and over and he will receive you back. So don't hesitate. Don't be reluctant. Don't be like Jonah and end up in a fish or under some other form of severe chastisement when you hear his reproof today. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, Next time, Jonah 4 will be done with the book of Jonah, and we'll be moving on in our study of the minor prophets. God bless you.